managerial accounting, we're talking about quality and now we're going to look at the financial measures of quality. And the financial measures of quality are conformance costs, meaning that you spend money on making your product or your service a quality product or a service. And there's two types of conformance costs. Those costs include prevention costs, and prevention costs generally have to do with engineering the product or the service. In other words, building quality into it. Appraisal cost is the testing not to see if you have mistakes, but testing to see if the internal business processes that you put in place to prevent quality mistakes are working. So here we're appraising the system, appraising the products or the services to make sure that everything is going according to plan, not finding the mistakes. Other types of costs of quality have to do with making the mistakes, and those are called non-conformance costs of quality. And non-conformance costs of quality are two kinds. One is called internal failure costs. Internal failure costs means who found the mistake? Well, we found the mistake before it went out to our customers. So the internal failure cost is the cost of finding the mistake and fixing the mistake inside the business. And usually what happens here is we fix it and then we sell it to the public as factory seconds, don't we? External failure cost means that's the cost of making mistakes in quality and guess who discovers them? The customer. And if the customer finds a mistake, what do they do? They bring it back and so these are costs like warranty costs, uh, customer service costs, in other words, if you ever notice that a customer service department in a store isn't really about customer service, it's about what? Customer complaints, isn't it? And why do customers complain? Because of external failures, don't they? So that customer service department in a store is really an external failure cost. Why? Because that's where customers go when the product or the service has failed and they want retribution, don't they? So let's take a look at a problem and figure out how we can compute financial measures of quality for conformance and nonconformance. So we're going to look at short exercise four. And in short exercise four, it says our total sales for our business are $50 million. Our prevention costs come to $523,000. So in other words, we've looked at all the costs of the company. And we've sorted them by do they prevent quality uh, from mistakes from happening, uh, appraisal costs, the internal reviews, are they internal or external failure costs? So we've sorted all our costs that way, and this is how they fall out. So notice this company is spending a total of $2.1 million on quality efforts. So the first one that they ask us to do in Part A is to figure out the total cost of quality as a percentage of sales. So the total cost of quality is $2.1 million divided by total sales of $50 million. So as a percentage of sales, this company is spending about 4.2% of its cost on, uh, for quality. Part B says we want to compute the ratio of the cost of conformance to the total cost of quality. So the cost of conformance, if I add these two together, notice it's going to come to a nice number, oh, not these two, excuse me. These two together, it comes to a nice number called 600,000. So the total cost of building quality into the product, 600,000, over the total cost of quality, 2.1 million, means that we are spending about 29% of our quality efforts on putting quality into the product. In Part C, we're going to look at the cost of nonconformance to the total cost of quality. And the nonconformance cost, which are these two, come to $1.5 million. So $1.5 million divided by $2.1 million 
means that this company, as far as what it's spending on quality, is spending a whole lot more on fixing mistakes. And that comes to 71%. Pretty bad. Finally, it says, well, let's look at our cost of nonconformance, 1.5 million, divided by sales, and sales, remember, are 50 million. And this is basically our lost profits, lost opportunities that we could have had on our bottom line if we had put in quality into the product or service to begin with. So notice we can improve our bottom line by 3%. So 3% of sales is there for us to earn if we just stop making mistakes.